with my skill set they would have hired three or four people so right. how do i make a difference how do i stand out right. how your typical day looks like at uber a lot of uh, brainstorming uh, with different different team members uh, what can we do how can we design a particular experiment but do you enjoy what you are doing right now like and what helps is like the people around us let's say if i'm going to the office it's not just because of work that can't be mm-hmm. the sole reason how do you balance your work life with your personal life right now like what's your perspective on that work will never end so you try yeah. that okay i will complete my tasks and mm-hmm. then i'll chill for the week that doesn't happen Some, something or the other keeps coming up like has there been any moments where you have prioritized your work more than your personal life like any sacrifices you made is my health important is my work important what yeah. should i do exactly yeah. let's say hypothetically your job disappears tomorrow start na theek hai okay let's start with the first and foremost thing and i think most of our few viewers want to know this like how much do you earn monthly oh good good question good start chal raha hai yaar khana paaye like एवरीथिंग इज डिसेंट आज इतना इतना कमा लेते हो आपके जितना नहीं बट चल रहा है अच्छा अच्छा ओके सो आवर टुडेस गेस्ट इज ऋषभ एंड ही इज अ सीनियर डेटा साइंटिस्ट वर्किंग एट उबर एंड टुडे जस्ट टू सेट द ग्राउंड्स वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट हिज ओन लाइफ एक्सपीरियंसेस दैट ही हैड व्हाइल नेविगेटिंग द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड एंड इफ एनीवन हु इज न्यू टू द कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड कैन टेक इंस्पिरेशंस फ्रॉम दोस एक्सपीरियंसेस एज वेल Okay, so to start, Rishab, uh, how your typical day looks like at Uber? First of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, really glad I can help. And uh, yeah, so day at Uber generally starts somewhere around ten. Uh, we generally log in around ten a.m. in the morning, mm-hmm. and uh, then now it's flexible. So it could be either nine thirty some days or eleven some days. That is still up to me based mm-hmm. on the amount of work that I have. and then uh, my main focus is generally during the mornings so i try to wrap up most of my project work or analysis if i'm doing anything or modeling if i'm doing anything in the first couple of hours and then like i do one or two meetings if let's say someone is unblocked uh, someone is blocked uh, and i can unblock them with uh, my insights i wrap up those meetings then okay. lunch generally at around 1:30 1 and then post that it is a lot of um, brainstorming uh, with different different team members uh, what can we do how can we design a particular experiment to mm-hmm. launch something what should be the timelines uh, to prepare all of that and then uh, even like i head back home uh, generally at around 6 uh, and then before us okay. uh, logs in which is somewhere around 7 where all my us meeting starts so every uh, stakeholder uh, who sits in us either Uh, on the bay area or uh, in new york mm-hmm. we uh, might have meetings with them during the evenings again these meetings would range uh, any time from strategy strategic work uh, or to incorporate uh, like more product ideas how can we uh, like as a business uh, run better and improve our products launch better mm-hmm. uh, or like maybe guiding juniors there so those kind of uh, things that is where my uh, day spans essentially okay quite hectic seems like yeah i mean the us firms generally because of these meetings in the uh-huh. night end up having like really hectic but do you enjoy what you are doing right now like the work that you do or yes i i, I think like uh, i'm almost like 7 7 and a half years of experience uh, so okay uh, slowly i also got to understand what my strengths are what my liking are at a corporate and what helps is like the people around you so let's say if i'm going to the office it's not just because of work that can't be mm-hmm. the sole reason team members the bonding and then work also to a certain extent ki uh, okay we see any changes that we make we, it is visible in the uber app for example mm-hmm. we work on the help section a customer satisfaction is our customer okay do they need any help safety related issues or are there bad actors in the industry like driver fraud and all those things so mm. it actually helps uh, like figure out various behaviors uh, uh, that people might be showing using like either support or where we are struggling as a company to not be able to uh, provide a good support to our users so okay. that actually helps because you actually see that we have deployed a let's say genai model mm-hmm. that model improved a certain metric uh, to a certain extent okay. that that change is really motivating once it like comes up Hmm. so these are like specific milestones that you have 
which keeps you up moving exactly but like any interesting stories that you have for our viewers like from your corporate world or... yeah i i i'll not any corporate world but very interesting thing is right now i work in uber right mm-hmm. so you know what so before uber i was in goldman sachs one one of the banks and there is where i met my wife but how did i meet my current wife uh, i mean my wife mm-hmm. essentially so we took a uber pool this was like 5 6 years ago when uber pool was still a thing in bangalore Okay. and both of us ended up uh, taking the same uber pool to the office so that is okay. where like we got introduced to each other and okay. slowly things moved and now ultimately i'm working in uber so it's a full circle oh interesting so that's <laughs> like a loyalty that you have with uber because of yeah so uber has uber little you, bit of a guys soft need. spot in my heart because of this uh, personal professional combined okay interesting yeah so all that is that's good that's a good story that you shared and apart from so you have a hectic work life like what i understood from your typical day experience how do you balance your work life with your personal life right now like what's your perspective on that yeah so a lot of people ask this work life balance related questions mm-hmm. what i would like to guide any young person who is entering corporate world is don't measure work life balance in terms of hours you can't say if it is 8 hours that's a good work life balance if it is 10 hours mm-hmm. that is a bad a uh, good like a uh, work life balance essentially it is broader look at over a period of time like how flexible is your company in terms of log in log out times mm-hmm. uh, is it always hectic is it certain times that it is hectic and also balance it with the value add so let's say if you are adding value to the company at the expense of let's say stretching a couple of hours and mm-hmm. if it gives you like a feel good factor about it then it is not a problem because you are feeling good about it mm-hmm. work life balance come come into the picture if you are working so hard and you're not feeling good about it then it becomes a stress then yeah. it leads uh, to you when you go back home it just like you cannot cut off mm-hmm. those kind of things happen so uh, like just in summary try to think long term and also see if it really interests you mm-hmm. and maybe have a cut off uh, that okay i will not check my emails or messages at home uh, okay. because i need to spend time with my family and uh, like setting those boundaries when setting those boundaries are out. very important mm-hmm. because that will help you balance both of these things mm-hmm. and also like have a discipline in managing this because otherwise it will be very hard that okay if you are only starting work at around 12 and then you expect to end at like 6 that is not going to happen because there's so much mm-hmm. work to be done I mean, like when, like in your case, you can work from your home as well. Like that flexibility is there. Yeah. But then you mentioned like we have to set boundaries. So does that ever happen to you? Like you always think, okay, let's let me do one hour more work, and then I'll go for my personal life or something like yeah. that. Because then I'll then I can achieve more in the corporate life. Yeah. yeah. So this used to happen. So like I joined Uber around three years back. So at least in my first year, I used to do exactly the same. I was struggling with work-life balance. It was a big change from a very big company to a uh, like little less mature company where mm-hmm. work is more pace is higher. Mm-hmm. So uh, I struggled in the first year to balance out all of these things. But essentially, what got understood, like what I uh, understood was. work will never end so you try yeah, that okay yeah. i will complete my tasks and uh-huh. then i'll chill for the week that doesn't happen Some, uh-huh. something or the other keeps coming up so uh-huh. that helped me establish that boundary okay yeah, that yeah. Uh, i have to have my dinner by let's say maximum by 839 because uh-huh. it also will start impacting your health then it started impacting my I mean, those long term effects we don't uh-huh. see generally but we have to keep that in mind as well yes. like well balancing those. yes 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 Thanks. so i like put a calendar block uh, in my calendar that okay no meetings at uh, between 8 to 9 or 8:30 to 9 mm. because this is my personal dinner time Mm. or let's say one more example is gym time right so mm. uh, earlier i used to gym in the evening mm. so i used to put uh, put a, a slot that 5 to 6 is my gym time so no meetings mm. at that time mm-hmm. so you have to have a balance uh, what you need to do what your priorities are yeah yeah, yeah. and then balance out your uh, work and life yes yeah, correctly said so when you talked about like the priorities that you set uh, during your corporate life has like has there been any moments where you have prioritized your work more than your personal life like any sacrifices you made in your personal yeah. life to, so to so that's a very good question and i would frame it like you have to sometimes make those sacrifices 
give uh-huh. you one example so gym right so i i went to the gym last year and i hurt my back um, there was a back injury lower back injury that happened in gym okay and it happened at such a bad time because that was the time where we had to launch a particular product and this is a product i have been working for last 6 months uh-huh. so if i take leaves then all my hard work is kind of gone uh-huh. and i'll have to then think is my health important is my work important what yeah. should i do exactly Mm-hmm. and it ended up that i was still working not at 100% uh, bandwidth but still i was working maybe 70 80% mm-hmm. bandwidth uh, but it ended up that my injury would, which would have healed in one month only mm-hmm. healed 6 months later and oh. only like 2 months back m- m- my back is like completely normal because uh, mm-hmm. i had to struggle like 6 months because of work and i didn't want to let go all my hard work uh, of a project essentially so that is the tough decisions or choices sometimes you have to make in your corporate career and think right. which would be better in the long term i do, do, won't say i regret it uh, taking that decision but uh-huh. let's say maybe i would have balanced it a little more so that the 6 months might have reduced to 3 months right so right. Uh, i mean that is how i might do it a little differently next time okay now the, the like switching gears ahead so let's say if, if someone is uh, uh, person who is uh, like doing their education and then they are shifting to the corporate world what advice or what experience you had when you shifted your career like focus from your campus education to mm-hmm. a corporate like world like it's not just about the skills that you need yeah. to do your work but yeah. also the mindset that you have to change yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so can you touch more on to that but yeah again great question uh rish so see essentially i would say skills come like little behind for me mindset okay. and attitude comes before everything okay. because that is what i've learned uh, as i started to intern in goldman sachs i had a 6 month internship okay. there is where i figured okay my skill set are not as important to the team as other attributes are for example okay. let's say with my skill set they would have hired three or four people so right. how do i make a difference how do i stand out mm-hmm. right so you have to think in that direction if you really have to grow in your career right. Right. what has helped me is i used to play uh, for a sports team in my college right so that team work helped me help my teammates here at work add value to their lives so let's say i am uh, slowly going to a mid manager role in uh, in my uh, career mm-hmm. um, still like uh, pre- pre- pretty young but what has actually helped me is like to help my juniors grow their careers to give direction mm-hmm. to make okay if someone joined from college and i am their senior if they would do a certain task in 8 hours mm-hmm. if i can make their life easy so that they can do the same task in 4 or 5 hours mm-hmm. that additional thing uh, is adding value to your team so it's not just your technical skills which you learn in classes mm-hmm. but your team work that you will learn or one more thing which i would like to say is consider your project as your own startup maybe so mm-hmm. okay how can you add more value how can you ask questions that others might not have thought of like take responsibility of take your responsibility own. on your own be a little more proactive mm-hmm. think what would be the next step of this project not just ki ha i have 10 tasks let's complete all 10 of them one by one and then go home and then my work is done that is also good to a certain extent Mm-hmm. but how do you stand out or how do you become like let's say better than an average uh, like you mean there's a there should be a differentiating factor when you compare yourself with a person who has the same skills yes and also mm-hmm. like what kind of value do you add to your firm and to your manager mm-hmm. and all those things so think it holistically think mm-hmm. ki why are you at this place you have to add value as i keep mm-hmm. saying again and again you have to uh, not just perform because that is part of your job Mm-hmm. but also uh, help others maybe or build a environment in the team where everyone is so welcome that they are performing better than their ability and like does that also help you grow personally as well like yes. learning all these things. that's a very personal okay. thing for me i really help mentor uh, juniors so it helps mm-hmm. me also grow a little bit because they also teach me a new perspective especially mm-hmm. with all this gen z that uh, mm-hmm. we are hiring these days and yeah. interns and like new joiners they have a very per- different perspective to life they are mm-hmm. very confident they want to things do things fast mm-hmm. i don't remember me being so fast i was very slow uh, laid back and slowly mm-hmm. then i like picked up the skills but these guys are like, really fast so also teach you something yeah for like like for me as well like whenever there is a new hire coming into our team they think 
like very fresh perspective as you said but our first in instinct is to say that okay no this is not how it should be this is how it should be and you're saying like we should be more open to their perspective as well yes. because doing a thing we can have different ways to do it yes more effectively. and also that will give them confidence to right. tomorrow come back to work and mm -hmm. experience that they are also adding to the team because mm. uh, if they are just being told uh, that okay do this mm. they will surely do it but then tomorrow they will not enjoy what they are doing because like someone has told them yeah ye ye wala kaam kar lo bhai yeah they would still be in that mindset ha ki kal bhi mere ko aake koi bata dega and then we'll do Correct. this uh. so they'll not take that initiative and taking initiative is really important mm. yeah so really small stuff. small behavioral things i feel like make someone really successful in early mm. stages of their career yeah interesting way. like a lot of new things uh, to learn from the experience like just to end the podcast i'd like to ask you the last question let's say hypothetically your job disappears tomorrow and we don't wish that but let's say your job disappears and you have enough money uh, to spend it on your entire life oh jane i might then, still take away all of our jobs but yeah i mean money part is something which i wish i would have yeah but like my uh, my perspective on question is like if you don't have to work for money who would the person you would be right now if not working at uber yeah i mean if i think about it i would i love watching sports i love traveling so maybe some secluded place in the mountains and watching lots of sports maybe commentating or analyzing how teams are playing maybe okay. doing a youtube channel of uh, how <laughs> sports is uh, being played by these teams okay that might interest me really well i mean you you would still want to analyze the i sports yeah, part I mean, analyze is fine but yeah watch and analyze maybe to also understand how things work no but is it coming from your like data background like you still interested in that i think yeah i have a, i have a strong interest in uh, analysis maybe that yeah. is why i chose data uh, side as well so i started my career as a data engineer but yeah. that didn't really suit me i wanted more business of side analysis yeah. and those things so i i think that is a interest a strong interest that i have okay nice okay uh, thanks rishab for coming to our podcast it was a pleasure to have you here thank you so much rishab no really conversation yeah Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>